Hello, welcome to QUT News. Hello. Leading our bulletin tonight, Canberra's backflip on a levy that could have cost taxpayers $400 a year. The Treasurer says he won't need to raise the Medicare levy half a percent. The decision to scrap the proposed levy increase will put up to $900 more in taxpayers' pockets. The increase was originally mooted in last year's budget. But Treasurer Morrison says a company bounced back from the mining downturn and a $1.2 billion rise in income tax collection means the extra impost is no longer needed. Australians were quite prepared to do this. They, they thought it was an, a good thing to do to support people with disabilities. But I tell you, if you don't have to do it, then you shouldn't. 440,000 Australians will benefit from the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Canberra's change of tune is not satisfying experts in the disability sector. The scheme is not appropriately funded. Uh, the scheme is not operating effectively as it could be. The half percent Medicare levy rise would have contributed $8 billion to the economy over four years. The Treasurer says the money for the NDIS is still safe and Australians won't have to nurse their bank accounts. By increasing the Medicare levy, so that's a win for taxpayers. Courtney McAllister, QUT News. The Queensland Government is still worried about this year's flu season. Now it's extending a free vaccination program to children as young as six months. Winter is coming and so is the flu. Last year was the worst flu season on record, so health and emergency departments are now urging all Queenslanders to get the flu jab this season. Now is the time for all Queenslanders to do their bit for their own health, but also for our wider health system and go and get their flu vaccinations. The vaccine is free for the most at-risk members of society, the elderly, pregnant women and kids. Uh, young children are super spreaders of the flu and that's why for the first time this year the Palaszczuk government is funding free vaccinations for kids, uh, for kids zero to five. 56,000 Queenslanders were struck down with the flu last year, putting an enormous pressure on health and emergency services. And doctors say much of that was unnecessary. When people present with illness due to a vaccine preventable illness, that does create an unnecessary demand on our emergency departments. They say many sufferers can treat themselves at home with rest and plenty of water, but those with serious symptoms should still seek help. George Carrington, QUT News. Police have arrested a man after he allegedly set fire to his own home in Melbourne's east. The home has been previously raided by police. The blaze caused extensive damage to the brick home. Neighbours had reported hearing the man previously threatened to set it alight. All of a sudden it was burnt down rather quick. I've never seen anything like this before, to be honest. The home has been the scene of criminal activity in the past. Two men were arrested in March after being found hiding from police in the home's roof. And in 2016, 400 marijuana plants were seized there, with a street value of $1 million. It is believed the arrested man was watching the fire as it happened. Pretty scary. First thought was, I hope no one was inside. The building is yet to be deemed safe to enter. The suspect is being interviewed by police. Mili Dimitrievich, QT News. Australia's High Commissioner to the UK, Alexander Downer, thinks he has a hot tip for the name of the new royal baby. He met with the Duke of Cambridge during Anzac Day services at Westminster Abbey. He asked Prince William, have you thought of the name Alexander? The prince responded, it's a good name. But Arthur, Albert and Philip are the bookmaker's favourites. Brisbane City Council plans to turn Oxley Creek into a world-class environmental destination. It's revealed a $100 million overhaul. It might not look like much now, but Oxley Creek is about to change dramatically. Today, the government unveiled their draft plan to turn this industrial creek corridor into a 1,000 hectare green precinct. There is no doubt in my mind that as our city grows, we have to create more parkland, more natural environments for our wildlife. Horse riding, boating, cycling and even the potential for new sports centres, these are the selling points in the council's pledge to restore the area over the next 20 years. They'll spend $5 million each year. 
In the past, it's had the reputation of the most polluted creek in southeast Queensland. This transformation project is all about changing the environs along this corridor. Oxley Creek touches dozens of Brisbane suburbs and its catchment is home to 60,000 plus residents. The council says its next step is to open this plan up for community comment. It would be nice if it stayed more of a natural environment, so like your horse trails and your bike ride riding as opposed to um, big buildings. It's hoped work will begin in September. Bella Wrigley, QUT News. Queensland has slammed the Commonwealth over reported plans to rip $40 million from state education in the budget. In a counter move, the state is committing a million dollars more to Gold Coast TAFE. The remnants of this 1980s classroom is being dismantled. It's going to get an upgrade as part of a million dollar investment announced by the Minister for Employment, Shannon Fentiman. The money will provide 3D printing facilities and new state-of-the-art welding bays. We're getting 80 new welding bays with proper ventilation. It was asbestos in next door, so that should have been removed. Efficiency will be the main focus of renovations with low-cost eco-LED lights and ergonomically designed workstations. I've worked on the new welders and they're way easier to learn and awesome. I think all the schools and uh, us as students, we, we need to uh, improve continuously. The Department of Employment forecasts that an additional 990,000 jobs are expected to be created by 2020, and 93% will need more than a secondary education. The jobs we are going to see in the next 10 years will all require a post-secondary school qualification. We are going to need students enrolled here at TAFE doing these exact courses if we are going to fill those jobs of the future. Queensland tertiary education providers are set to take a $4 million hit in the federal budget, but Minister Fentiman says she will not be signing any dud deals with the Prime Minister. The Minister is determined to fight hard to stop it. And we know that a $40 million cut will mean 2,000 apprentices and trainees are at risk just here in southeast Queensland. At least these students will be able to use their new facility by the end of June. Lucy Javinsky, QT News. There's bad news and good news for Brisbane motorists. The Story Bridge will close this weekend for maintenance, but it won't cost anything to use the Clem Jones Tunnel instead. From 9pm Friday to 5am Monday, this bridge will be deserted. A full closure is required to apply a new waterproof membrane to the concrete, then lay new asphalt. Uh, if we could have closed part of it, we would have absolutely done that, but it's not possible. We we need to get this work done in a weekend and we've got to unfortunately close the whole bridge. Council investigations found concrete deterioration caused by water ingress, particularly in the south beams and slabs. Traffic diversions will be in place to direct motorists towards either the Captain Cook Bridge or Clem 7. All tolls will be waived for the duration of the closure. There will be a change to, to the route, so that will obviously create some issues, potentially some congestion in parts, but just make sure you leave yourself that extra bit of time to get around. Businesses and residents close to the bridge may experience some construction impacts, including vibrations, noise and dust. Although close to 200,000 motorists will be affected by this weekend's maintenance, cyclists and pedestrians will still have full access. Elkie Bowman, QUT News. Looking again at our main story, the government abandons a planned increase in the Medicare levy, saving taxpayers $400 a year. And still to come, spectacular scenes as lava flows from Hawaii's most volatile volcano. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, has ended his three-day visit to the US with firm words for President Trump. He says modern economic and security challenges must be a shared responsibility. President Macron has urged President Trump and US Congress to avoid nationalism and remain engaged with the rest of the world. If we do not act with urgency as a global community, I am convinced that the international institutions, including the United Nations and NATO, will no longer be able to exercise a mandate and stabilizing influence. He also addressed the US's position on the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, an international agreement on the nuclear program in Iran. As for Iran, our objective is clear. 
Iran shall never possess any nuclear weapons. Not now, not in five years, not in 10 years, never. Trump has often threatened to pull the US out of the deal, which was negotiated by former President Barack Obama. Macron was also critical of Trump's decision to withdraw from the Paris Agreement on climate change. By polluting the oceans, not mitigating CO2 emissions, and destroying our biodiversity, we are killing our planet. Let us face it, there is no planet B. George Carrington, QUT News. McDonald's restaurants in Russia are now serving up homegrown meals, replacing their last imported ingredient with locally produced potatoes. It comes after the United States imposed sanctions. The humble French fry is at the center of a political stoush between Russia and the US. US sanctions have spurred Russian McDonald's to produce all ingredients for the fast food giant on home turf. No, 98% the Russian chairman of McDonald's says 98% of all that will be sold will be produced in Russia, which is a big achievement. The restaurants previously relied on frozen French fries from the Netherlands and Poland, as local potatoes didn't make the cut. Trade sanctions were imposed on Russia by Western nations following its annexation of Crimea. Russia responded in 2014 by banning meat, dairy and fruit and vegetable imports from Western nations. A new Russian factory worth 139 million US dollars will process 200,000 tonnes of potatoes a year. It will supply fries to 651 McDonald's outlets across Russia. Courtney McAllister, QUT News. Extraordinary footage has been released showing Hawaiian volcano Kilauea spewing lava for the first time in two years. The rise of the summit lake from the eruption produced the largest overflow since the summit vent opened up 10 years ago. Kilauea has been active since the 20th of March and still has a high lava level. The area remains closed to the public due to ongoing volcanic activity. The European Space Agency has sent out its latest environmental observation satellite. It was launched on a modified Russian ballistic missile designed to carry nuclear warheads. Many stood by to watch the launch from the Cosmodrome, 800 kilometres north of Moscow. The satellite is part of the agency's Copernicus program to observe the Earth's oceans, lakes and vegetation. The RSPCA is always seeking homes for abandoned dogs, but now it's imploring dog lovers not to overlook terrier, bulldogs and mastiff crosses despite their reputations. Bully-type dogs are often thought of as violent and hard to train. However, the RSPCA rejects this common misconception. It's simply not true. I mean, uh, we always say that you, you, you punish the deed, not the breed. The shelter in Waco houses a wide variety of bully breeds that have become homeless and are harder to adopt out than smaller breeds that are often deemed to be cuter. They make great pets. Staff say these dogs are playful, friendly and can be trained to become loyal friends. Families would be fine, especially kids would be great. I mean, they're very active so kids can run around, have a play and... As you can see, dogs like Jimmy here are very docile as pups, but as he grows up, he will require the right training that will allow him to become part of any family. You can't leave uh, a dog like this in a courtyard 24-7. From Saturday, April 28th to Monday, May 7th, a de-sexed and microchip bully will be cheaper to adopt than normal. More information is available online and from the RSPCA at Waco. Rory Scott, QT News. A dozen sharks have been filmed by a local man circling a school of bait fish off North Stradbroke Island. Barry Mile used a drone to capture the scene just a couple of hundred metres from shore. Experts say it's not unusual at this time of year as the water temperatures drop. The sharks are believed to have been bull, tiger and reef sharks. One of Australia's greatest tennis stars is coming out of retirement. Leighton Hewitt will play doubles at the Estoril Clay Court Tournament in Portugal.
He'll partner emerging Aussie talent Alex Di Menor. Hewitt is Davis Cup captain and a former world number one. He retired in 2016. Now to Rugby League and the NRL has admitted the Dragons should not have been awarded a controversial try in the Anzac Day clash. The ruling virtually knocked St George Illawarra out of the game. The NRL has admitted Dragons player Nene McDonald spilt the ball in his try against the Roosters at Allianz Stadium, but there's no overturning the win. And in their game, the Melbourne Storm thrashed the New Zealand Warriors, opening the score in the third minute. Billy Slater collected the Anzac Day medal after his performance with a try and two assists. We've done a pretty good job with, with our defence on the try line, so as I said, you know, it's... it's it was a pretty complete performance and you know, I'd probably rate up there with the best of the year. And Manly is regathering after three losses and crucial injuries. Coach Trent Barrett is determined to get a fresh start. All the boys are pretty excited to play, especially back here at home. Um, and it's a huge two points for us. Um, we need to win to stay in touch. In AFL, Essendon veteran Brendan Goddard has been slammed for blowing up at his teammates repeatedly during their loss to Collingwood. Oh, no. I can be quite uh, demonstrative at times, but uh, it's about getting a message across quick during the heat of the game. Meanwhile, in the A-League semi-finals, Melbourne City goes head-to-head -head with Newcastle Jets and needs to be fired up. Just need to have that killer instinct, especially in the semi-final. If we can put the game away earlier, then it, it'll make it a bit easier. City hasn't lost a game to the Jets in more than a year. Kirsty Davis, QT News. The weather details are next with Madison Scott and the six-month search for names for some cute little pandas. Hello there, we've had a sunny start to the day. But keep your umbrella handy with late showers forecast. Today, Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast reach tops of 28 degrees with 27 on the Gold Coast. Ipswich had a cool night on 14. If you're catching a plane interstate, you'll see a bit of cloud in Melbourne, Sydney and Adelaide. Anyone going to Hobart, keep a jumper ready with a top of 16. Darwin will see plenty of sunshine and a maximum around 34 degrees. To regional Queensland now and most of the state will be sunny with high UV ratings. A top of 31 in Cairns and Townsville and 33 in Longreach. Bundaberg should reach a top of 30. It won't be a good day for boating tomorrow. Winds could hit 20 knots in the afternoon with seas below a metre. Sunrise is just after 6am. If you're on the Gold Coast, expect possible showers and a top of 26. But it will be sunny on the Sunshine Coast and a degree warmer. Brisbane tomorrow should be mostly sunny too, but light showers are possible. And that's the weather for now. Hope you enjoy it. The Shanghai Wild Animal Park has named its newest panda cubs after six months of searching. It launched an online campaign. Shanghai Park has chosen Qian Xin for the older male cub, born on October 4 last year, and Shui Bao for the younger female cub, born just six days later. More than 5,000 suggestions were made in the online campaign. The names will now make it easier for the park to take care of them for daily training and feeding by giving the pandas a conditioned reflex. Shui Bao weighs 20 kilograms, and Qian Xin weighs 17 kilograms. This expert says both the cubs and their mothers are in good health. The panda cubs have been the main attraction in the park since their birth. Mili Dimitrievich, QT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.